This is Lesson 1.2, Classifying Data. There are many different ways to classify data. The most basic, and where we always must start, is to determine whether our data is qualitative or quantitative. The reason this is so important is that it will affect how we are able to analyze that data. A qualitative variable, which you might also hear called nominal or categorical, is essentially a variable that tells us a category or group an individual belongs to. Numbers can be used here, but we wouldn't find value in analyzing the numbers. For instance, if I asked you your month of birth, I was born in December, which is denoted by the number 12. However, if I had a group of data that included everyone's month of birth, it would not make sense for me to find the average of that data. The drawback to qualitative variables is that it's challenging to analyze, again, because we don't have numbers. Quantitative variables are numbers that act as numbers. Typically, you're going to record the amount of something or the degree of something. For instance, if I asked you your height or your weight or the number of siblings that you have, those are all numbers. I would find value in finding the average or the median or the mode of those values. Let's take a look at a couple of examples just to make sure we understand the difference between qualitative and quantitative. For the sake of time, I'm just going to denote qualitative with one and quantitative with two. Since they both start with Q, I obviously wasn't going to use a Q for each. We'll start with age. Age is a number. And is it a number that we would find value in finding statistics of? Yes, it is. It is quantitative because it would make sense for us to analyze the average age and so forth. Gender. Gender is not a number. That makes it pretty easy to determine that it is, in fact, qualitative. And again, it's just a category that you belong to. That is the same as with race. Race is a category that you belong to. There is no number involved in that. Salary. Salary is a number. The question is, is it a number that acts as a number? And yes, it is. It is a number that we would find value in finding the average or median or mode of. The month recorded where 1 is January, 2 is February, and so on. We did talk about this already, but again, even though we're dealing with numbers, the numbers are representing a category. We would not find value in finding any statistics with those numbers, so this is qualitative. Pet preference, dog, cat, bird, other, that is, of course, qualitative because it is a category. And medicine dosage is a number. We're measuring the degree or amount of something and that is quantitative. Just a reminder, whenever you see a title in blue, that means I would like you to press pause and try the question on your own. I find it's always easier when someone is walking you through an example and a little bit more difficult when you have to do it yourself and really think through the process. So please do press pause and try this question. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. I'm going to use the same numbering system I did on our last question just to make things go a little bit faster. The first question has to do with shades of green paint in a home improvement store. Not really anything to do with numbers here, even if each shade of green paint might be denoted by some number in the hardware store for categorizing. Again, it is a category, so that is a qualitative variable. Rankings of the most popular paint colors for the season. Now, rankings does indicate that we're dealing with a number, but again, we would not find value in finding the average ranking. So this is still going to be a qualitative variable. Now, I do want you to note the difference between these two, as later when we're looking at a different way of categorizing variables, you will see that those are two different types of qualitative variables. The next question has to do with the amount of blue primary dye necessary to make one gallon of each shade of green paint. Again, we're um, looking at the degree or measurement of something. That is going to be quantitative. And lastly, numbers of paint choices available at several stores. 
Again, we're dealing with numbers, and we would find value in finding the average number of different shades of green paint. So those are both quantitative. Again, I want you to note the difference between these two, um, as we are going to take a look right now at the difference between how we would measure the amount of blue primary dye versus the number of paint choices. We're now going to take a closer look at quantitative data. Quantitative data can be further classified as either continuous or discrete. So as promised, we just looked at an example where we were looking at the amount of blue dye required to make, whoops, required to make different shades of green. And then we were looking at the number of green shades available. And we said that these were both in fact quantitative and that's important because of course, this is only for quantitative data. But the difference between these two things is that one is continuous and one is discrete. So if you're dealing with discrete data, you're typically dealing with whole numbers. You're typically going to be counting something. Like I can have two children, that's a count. I can't have 2.37 children, that would be very weird. So if we're looking at the number of green shades, I'm counting that, that's a discrete value. Whereas if I'm looking at the amount of blue dye required to make different shades of green, I might put in you know, one ounce or 1.01 ounce or 1.234 ounces. This is continuous. So quite often you're going to deal with a measurement when you're dealing with continuous data. Let's take a look at some practice questions. We're going to do two together and you're going to do the second two on your own. Again, we're just going to use that numbering system where we'll use one for continuous and two for discrete. And as you're looking at these, the easiest way to determine the difference between the two is to always think about measurement when you're thinking about continuous and think about counts when you're thinking about discrete. So if I'm counting how many of something there are, that is definitely discrete. If I'm measuring something, that's going to be continuous. For the first question, temperatures in Fahrenheit of cities in South Carolina, that is a measurement. We're measuring a temperature, so that is going to be continuous. For the number of houses in various neighborhoods in a city, we are counting the number, and that is going to be two, the discrete data. If you would, press pause and try the next two on your own, and when you're ready, press play, press play to see how you did. So the next question says the number of elliptical machines at every YMCA in your state. Again, we are counting the number that is discrete data. Heights of doors, we are measuring the heights of doors. So that is going to be continuous data. We're now going to look at the last way to classify data, which is levels of measurement. There are four levels of measurement. The first two are both qualitative. So if you'll notice, the first two are qualitative. So we're going to look at those two first. So these are both categorical or qualitative variables. Nominal is sort of the lower level of qualitative, which means it's really just a category. It's a label, it's a name, it's a category, etc. Whereas ordinal can be arranged in a meaningful order but calculations don't make sense. Now I've got an example of each of these on the next page, but again, we were talking about rankings before. A ranking was not quantitative data, it was qualitative, and so that would be in that ordinal where it's a ranking, but we wouldn't necessarily subtract or add or find the average of rankings. Now let's look at the next two, which are both quantitative. So quantitative, of course, means numbers that act as numbers. And the only difference between these two is in the interval data, there's no meaning for zero, whereas ratio data, the zero point indicates the absence of something. So that's the difference between interval and ratio. Let's take a look at an example of each. So for nominal, again, this was just a category. For instance, the genres of music performed at the Grammys whereas ordinal is still categorical, it is still qualitative, but there's going to be some 
ranking that would make sense. So here are the seat numbers on your concert tickets. So there's probably going to be some numbers involved. Those numbers are meaningful, but we wouldn't necessarily find the difference of two seat numbers or the average seat number. For interval, again, now we're looking at quantitative data, but where zero does not mean anything. So the birth years of your classmates, uh, we wouldn't think about zero as someone's year of birth. Whereas ratio is ages of US presidents when they were inaugurated. So an age, an age of zero would mean the age of birth. So I'm a very visual learner and I always find it helpful to have a graphic, especially for something like this. A lot of people really struggle with determining data types. And so I've made a graphic for you between qualitative and quantitative. And again, this just summarizes what we just talked about. So qualitative data, if it's labels or names, it's nominal. If it can be arranged but differences aren't meaningful, it's ordinal. If it's quantitative data, we might look at discrete or continuous. Um, but if it can be arranged in a meaningful order but zero is not important, that's interval. If zero indicates the absence of something, that is ratio. So let's take a look. And again, this is a blue question, which means if you're up for it, you should press pause here, read over this question, and determine the classifications for each. So there are quite a few. There are four, and for each of those four scenarios, you are determining quantitative or qualitative. If it is quantitative, you should determine discrete or continuous or neither. Neither, of course, if it's qualitative. And then the level of measurement. When you are ready, press play to see how you did. Our first example is finishing times for runners in a 5K race. So if I'm looking at finishing times, that is definitely a measurement, which means it's not qualitative. It is going to be quantitative data. Is it discrete or is it continuous? Well, it's a measurement and the measurement can be any value. It doesn't have to just be whole number values. So this is going to be a continuous quantitative variable. Now the question becomes, is zero meaningful or not? Well, if we're looking at finishing times, zero would indicate the absence of racing. If I have a time of zero, I didn't race. And therefore, this is ratio. The next is colors contained in a box of markers. So if we're looking at colors, this is obviously not quantitative data, which means this is going to be neither for discrete or continuous. So it is qualitative, and then we have to determine can those colors be arranged in a meaningful order? And the answer there, of course, is no. This is just a label or a name. So this is qualitative data. It's a label or a name, so therefore it is nominal. Next is boiling points for various liquids measured in degrees Celsius. So again, we're looking at a measurement, which means it's not qualitative, it's quantitative. And because we are measuring in degrees Celsius, we know that's going to be a continuous variable. So it's quantitative and continuous. And then the question becomes, does zero indicate the absence of something? Well, we're looking at degrees Celsius. Does zero indicate the absence of heat? No, it does not. So this is interval. Whoops, sort of cut that one short there. This is interval, again, because zero does not indicate the absence of heat. The last question is the top 10 summer vacation destinations. And again, we're recording destinations, so that is not a number. So it's not quantitative, which means it's neither discrete nor continuous. We're looking at qualitative data. And then the question is, is this labels or names, or is there some meaningful order? Well, we're looking at the top 10, so presumably we're going to have an order, the number one being the best and number 10 being the worst out of those 10. So that's going to be, can be arranged in a meaningful order, but the difference between data aren't meaningful, and that's ordinal data. Up next, we're going to take a closer look at statistical studies.